gotta get this data to start off this tape quick. Hey Eli, can you come here? What's up? Can you drive across town and stick this in the I.O. slot of the tape library, please? Sure. What? Thanks, I got a board meeting I gotta go to. What's an I.O. slot? Hey Coop, I'm super bored. I got your brother driving a tape all the way across town. You want to come over for a meeting? Thanks for coming over to the board meeting. Yeah. I didn't know what I was going to do all day. Okay. Now that that board meeting is over, let's restore that data from the tape. Oh no, he must have just put the tape in one of these slots. Now I don't know which tape to restore from. Hmm, if only I had put a barcode on that tape. I've always been intrigued with tapes and tape devices, going all the way back to my very first Walkman. It even had an AM FM radio included on it. All joking aside, this is something I put together about 10 years ago for use in my home lab, but on rare occasion, I've had to use this for work as well. I'd just love to share this with everybody in hopes that it helps you out as well. But first, a quick warning. The barcodes that we're going to create are not meant to be your everyday tape labels. For those, you should buy quality labels from a supplier. Those will likely have a protective glossy finish to them to prevent smudging, tears and rips, and other things that might go wrong and clog or get stuck in your tape drives or libraries. Let's talk about what we need to get this job done. We're going to need a special font, some stickers, a template to use in Microsoft Word or Libre Writer, and a printer. I personally used an inkjet printer to create these from HP, but any cheap printer should do the trick. I'll include all of this information in the show notes, so don't feel like you have to write this down yourself. The three of nine font will be needed to create our labels I've included a link to the Wikipedia page that describes what the 3 of 9 font is, as well as a link to Matthew Welch's website where you can download and use free 3 of 9 font as described in his license file, which will be included in the zip file that you download. I'd like to take a moment to thank Matthew. I've been using this for about 10 years. I'll be using Windows in my examples. And all I had to do was download the zip file, extract it, and then right click on the two TTF files included. In Windows, there's an option to just select install. That will take you through the very, I don't even think it pops up anything. It just installs the fonts in your control panel for you. After doing so, I was able to select those font choices in Microsoft Word, or in this example, I'll be using Libre Writer For the stickers, I used the 6792 labels from Avery. They look like this. You'll also want to download the template for Microsoft Word. Concerning the tape barcode label requirements, I've listed a couple URLs or links to some IBM documents for your reference. They include lots of information about how to properly format each label for you. If you're curious about learning more, feel free to take a read. The links will be in the show notes. Okay, let's open the Word template that we've downloaded. You should see a blank play page like this with 32 cells divided in two columns. We want each cell to end up looking like a barcode. Let's make a few changes to the application before we get started. 
First, we need to disable auto bolding when we use two asterisks. To do that, you go to Tools, Autocorrect, Options, and disable this feature here. It will look similar in Microsoft Word. After doing that, I like to create two font styles, one for the actual barcode and another that is like a human readable format. To do that, you go to Styles, Manage Styles. I like to put mine under the table of contents. Just right click and do New. Let's call the first one Tape Barcode Text. That'll be our human readable version. You're gonna want to click on Font. And I'd like to set mine to Arial. I like to make it bold and 12 point font. The alignment should be centered. Hit OK. We now have the tape barcode text style. Let's create one more. And we'll call this one tape barcode. The font will be free three of nine. Leave the style as regular, but change the size to 48 point. We'll also go to alignment and choose center. You could go into each cell and format it to look like a tape barcode, but I've already gone through that effort and I've included that template in the show notes. Let's go ahead and open that up so you can see what it ends up looking like. Okay, feel free to go through this effort yourself if it, it's a great learning exercise, but let's take a look at this. Um, all right, let's break this down a little bit. Each cell is a unique barcode. Let's focus on just one right now. So this first cell consists of this top line and the barcode itself. The top line has seven boxes. This is referred to as the human readable text area. The first six boxes are a unique barcode. These sh cells should contain uppercase, alpha, A to Z, or numeric zero to nine characters. Tapes that start with a CLNU are using a label reserved for universal cleaning cartridges and should end with an L1. We'll get into that more in a minute. In this example, we're going to create a sheet of cleaning labels. The last box, number seven, that is your media identifier. For LTO media, LTO stands for linear tape open. We use the letter L followed by the generation of LTO media. Again, in our example, we're going to use LTO1, which is a really old type of media. But since we're cleaning, creating cleaning tape labels, the generation really does not apply to the type of tape or the drive we're going to use. Um, again, this top area here is the human readable area, and it is not used by the tape barcode reader. This font here, if I highlight it, you'll see the style is the tape barcode text that we created. You can see the font is Arial at a 12 point bolded font. Let's move on to the actual barcode itself. There are several rules that apply to the barcode being used here. I'll include a link to the following sites that you can read at your leisure that talk a lot about the barcodes and all the rules that go into creating these. But I've broken it down to just a simple few things. There is the height, thickness, and spacing gaps. Um, again, take a look at those URLs for more information about that. But let's change our barcode font to something readable so we can see what's going on here. 
you might not have seen that. I actually triple clicked in, in this cell. First one is just to set the focus. Two, we'll do a middle section here. It's probably hard to see, but there's a beginning and end that are not selected. But when you triple click, it selects all of it. Let's change our style to the tape barcode text. All right, this should match <laughs> the very, the top, the human readable format. That is a pro tip. If you type something that does not match the human readable area, you're just asking for problems down the road. The barcode reader itself doesn't look at the top section, so it won't care if these two don't match. But sometime down the road, you will care. Let's break this down a little here. You'll notice each, um, each line here, I'll go ahead and do another one. The beginning and ending start and end with an asterisk. That is um, one of the formatting rules that we have to follow. That's also why we went and disabled the auto bolding um, in the in the writer application. This barcode is not supposed to have bolded um, lines in the barcode section, but the tape reader requires a beginning and ending asterisk. That's called, um, it's a special characteristic called the start and stop character. You'll also notice there's a white space at the end and after the barcode. That's there on purpose. Those are called the quiet zones. What I like to do is triple click each cell holding control down when I'm creating these sheets and then changing it to the text one. So I can go through quickly and just number these or name them like I want. And then when I'm all done, I can just triple click each cell. Again, hold control down when you do that. And then you can just change the style to the tape barcode. That'll just make things a little faster for you. When I think I'm ready to print this out, I'll print it out on a piece of plain white paper and then hold that up over the top of a sheet of labels just to make sure the cells all line up. Once you're satisfied with that, just print it out on the actual sticker sheet and then apply those to the tape. I did want to point out just a few common mistakes I made along the way. I'm going to remove one of these asterisks here and then change the font back to the tape barcode. Let me remove them both. You'll notice the barcode still looks like a barcode, but it doesn't have that start and end character. That will cause problems with the tape barcode reader. Let's change it back to font, um, to readable. Let's just put one to begin with. Again, you don't really notice it. The, the start's there, but the stop is not there. So you really need to change these things to human readable text to see what's going on. Another problem you could run into is if someone puts a lowercase letter in here. Let's see what happens. Let me make that font size smaller so you can actually see what happened there. Oop. Maybe a little bigger. <laughs> so it created a barcode, but because the barcodes need to be uppercase characters, it wasn't able to actually put our barcode font there, so it just left the Arial text. So let's change that back to the text, make it uppercase again. Make sure it lines up, C-L-U, C-L-N-U, 5-5-L-1. And let's change that back to a barcode, and we're all good. All right, I've printed out my labels, and I applied one of them to my cleaning cartridge. 
went ahead and put that in the I.O. slot of the tape library. Let's go check it out. Beautiful, there it is. You can see the barcode shows up just like it is on paper. I'll go ahead and move that into my reserve slot. If you have any questions about anything that was done in the show here, if you have a better way of doing things, please let me know. Drop me a line. I'm always curious to learn new things or better ways of doing old things.